The Quest 2 is coming up to its second birthday and it's still going strong and easily the most popular VR headset now, but there have been whispers of the Project Camrya headset, Meta's big upgrade to the Quest 2, and finally it looks like it'll be out very soon, maybe even next month. In this video we'll go over everything we need to know about the fabled Meta Quest Pro and find out if the Quest 2 is about to die. Welcome back to the VRC and don't forget to sub if you like VR, it's free, blah, 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 blah. So it's September and MetaConnect, Meta's big event where they reveal big news about the company, is coming probably in October. Last year, we didn't get any new headset announcements. We just got this. Our company is now Meta. Wow, thanks for that. Two years ago, we got the Quest 2 announcement, which was a lot more exciting. And this year, we're hoping for an announcement about the new high-end virtual reality headset. And I'm talking really high-end, the MetaQuest Pro, which up till now has been known as Project Cambria. So before we find out more about the features, how do we know it should be coming out in October? Well, the Zuck has said it himself to Joe Rogan on his podcast. So to keep MetaConnect a bit more pizzazz, they will most likely announce it there. Prominent VR investigator Brad Lynch believes that to be more precise, the headset will be available on October 25th with pre-orders available at the aforementioned Meta Connect, very similar to the Quest 2 launch two years ago. So what do we know about the headset? Well, it looks to be a lot smaller than the Quest 2. Don't forget all the news in this video are still rumors, but people who have done a lot more digging than I have have good reason to believe them to be true. Also, the images of the Quest Pro in this video are either renders or prototype versions of the Quest Pro, meaning it could look slightly or a lot different when it's released. So back to it, and it looks like it will have a battery on the back of the strap rather than in the main unit at the front. Good news, because not only will it mean the headset will feel a lot lighter and better balanced, it also means there won't be a ton of aftermarket straps available for it. So I'll actually have to go back to thinking of good video ideas again. Not only this, I would assume that Meta would want to make this device as comfortable as possible to keep people working and playing in VR for as long as possible. As for displays, it looks like the Quest Pro will go back to having one screen per eye like the Quest 1, as well as other high-end headsets like the Valve Index had. This would be a good thing because you could then have proper IPD adjustment to cater for a large range of people with eyes of differing distances apart. Remember, the Quest 2 uses a single panel for its screens and clicky and quite limited IPD adjustment that means a lot of people still couldn't use it comfortably and those with the largest IPDs can even see the edges of the LCD panel when they're using it. This meant they had a reduced field of view and therefore a reduced immersion in virtual reality. More on that display and more data mining from Brad Lynch, what a dude, also reveals that the expected resolution is going to be 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye, which is amazing. I think the Quest 2 resolution is already great at 1920 by 1832 per eye, but this is quite a lot more, about 30% more. Remember, VR works by putting screens right next to your eyes and using lenses so we can focus on the screens. Although these resolutions are way higher than full HD and even more than 4K, to make VR seem as sharp as 4K, the resolutions need to be way, way higher. So the more, the better, basically. On to refresh rate, that's how many frames per second the headset can run at, and it seems like it's gonna be 120 hertz. Now, this may not seem that great since the Quest 2 can already do 120 hertz, but remember, the Quest 2 runs at 120 hertz experimentally, so it's not really designed to be doing it for long periods of time, especially if it's running a graphically intense game. The Quest Pro should be able to do 120 hertz without breaking a sweat, and you know what that means? Experimentally, the Quest Pro should get you real gamers up to your magical 144 hertz. Good news for people who hate the bad black levels of LCD screens, the Quest Pro will be taking us back to LED screens. The screens are said to be mini LED, meaning black scenes will look black rather than really dark gray like LCD. LED technology seems to have moved on too, so the issue of LCD looking sharper at the same resolutions than LED due to more subpixels seems to have been solved. Good news for both resolution fans and black level fans. Trust me, those things really do have fans. According to Angela Chang, the head of VR devices at Meta, the device will also have so-called pancake optics. They essentially work by folding light several times over to achieve a slimmer profile than current lenses. Again, allow 
allowing the headset to be much slimmer than previously thought possible. A bit more on specs, and it looks like it's going to have the same chipset as the Quest 2, the Snapdragon XR2, which although it's an amazing chipset, it is over two years old now, so I wouldn't be too surprised if that wasn't the case. Also, storage seems to be 256 gig too, which again is the same as the Quest 2. Again, I hope that that will increase to at least 512, because as we found out with the Quest 2, 64 gigabytes really became too small very quickly as games got larger. And if the Quest Pro is going to be cutting edge, then surely the games developed for it will be a lot larger than what we're used to right now. Now, I assume everything will be backwards compatible with the Quest 2, meaning the Quest Pro can play everything on the Quest 2. So maybe the purpose of the Quest Pro isn't really as a gaming device, since who would want to stop making games for the Quest 2 when it makes the developers a load of money? I'd really like to see developers use more graphical options as seen on PC games so that when played on a Quest Pro, games can look truly stunning but will still work on a Quest 2 with lower graphical settings. At 12GB, the Quest Pro will have double the amount of RAM as the Quest 2 and the RAM will be faster as well. A feature the Quest Pro will have that hasn't been seen on commercially available headsets is full face and eye tracking. There are loads of videos on this, so just do a quick search, but very quickly, it means that your avatar will really spring to life, assuming the game or experience supports it, where every facial expression that you make will be mirrored on your in-game character. Quest Pro users should probably stay away from VR poker. To do this, the Quest Pro will have loads of cameras facing you on the inside of the headset, much more than the four cameras the Quest 2 has on the outside to track your hands. Speaking of those external cameras, they will now be capable of color pass through so augmented reality experiences where you can see the real world as well as computer generated imagery will be a lot nicer than it is using the black and white quest 2. Maybe I'll finally be able to make a dress with cartoon birds. You may have already seen images of the new controllers but it seems that they are now less bulky than the previous controllers and are doing away with the tracking rings which made them hard to get into some cases. Halo oh. protectors! <laughs> and they also broke a lot. Without the tracking rings, it looks like even more cameras will be on those controllers to track their position, which will hopefully also solve the problem of loss of tracking when the controllers go behind your head. For example, when you want to get a sword out ready for a decapitation. There also seems to be a really nice charging dock for the Quest Pro, which hopefully for the price actually comes with the device. That will be nice because since it charges the controllers, you'll no longer have to faff about with AA batteries. Now, there are a lot more specs and other features of the Quest Pro floating around than I've mentioned in this video, but a lot of them are unsubstantiated or at least don't give the backup of the information that I've decided to put in this video. Again, good work to people like Brad Lynch who have found out most of this information. So, with all of these cool features, how much is it all going to cost? And is it really going to kill off the Quest 2? Well, originally I thought it would be about $800 or £800. And at that price, there's a good chance a lot of people would get it and it would replace their Quest 2. But from what we've heard so far, it looks like it's going to be a whopping $1,500. And hopefully that doesn't mean it's going to be £1,500 as well. But that is a lot of money, a lot more than the $300 the Quest 2 cost when it first came out five times as much. So suffice to say, it's not going to be a replacement for the Quest 2 for most people, and it probably won't sell as well. That's good news for Quest 2 users, and it seems their device is going to stay relevant for at least another year. We're expecting the Quest 2's true replacement, the Quest 3, to come out in October 2023. So yippee, the Quest 2 is not dead just yet. But how are people who are desperate for a Quest Pro going to pay for it? Well, maybe by fleecing Quest Pro users of VR poker, or maybe Meta will introduce phone-like contracts where people start paying 30 to 50 pounds a month and then basically start buying every other headset. Like if people like the Samsung Galaxy, they might have bought the 7 and then the 9, missing out the 8. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if there's anything else you want to know, then just ask below and I'll do my best to find out for you. Also, what did I miss? Did I leave anything really important out? For example, the sound straps or something like that. Let us know what you think in the comments. The exciting times for VR like we had two years ago are coming back and I hope you will stick around for the ride. Thanks so much for watching this far into the video. If you'd hit that thumbs up button for me, that would be amazing too. Until next time, 
Take care of yourselves. See ya.